In order for us to function and operate the way that we do, there is behind the scenes a communication system, a very rapid and efficient communication system. This is known as the nervous system. Communication occurs within the nervous system via neurons. Neurons are cells that have highly specialized tasks and methods for both receiving and transmitting information all across the body. The neurons have a very specific structure. There are three parts to the structure that we'll focus on for the purposes of the CLEP exam. We have the cell body, which contains the central operating system, if you were, of the cells, which contains the nucleus, where all of the energy is produced and uh, uh, the efficiency of the entire cell uh, is focused in the cell body. Next we have the dendrites. The dendrites up here and all around here, these little branches that jet out, these take information in from the outside of the cell. They're feelers that look out for information and bring that information into the center of the cell, into the cell body. Then we have the axons. The axons pass information along to other nerve cells and the axon typically is one single strand and at the very end of the axon are axon terminals and this provides a very efficient way to get information from the cell out to the rest of the body. Another important feature of the nerve is something called the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath cover the axon on some of the neurons, not necessarily all neurons. And the purpose, I'm going to go back here, the purpose of the myelin sheath right here, this covering here, it's like the covering that you might find on an electrical wire. It's meant to insulate the communication and the transmission of electrical impulses along the axon so that the information travels in a rapid fashion and as we said in an, in an efficient manner. You'll notice that in between the myelin sheath there are breaks in the line. These are referred to as the nodes of Ranvier. It's almost like a, a, a subway car. They're not fully attached all the way through. At least in the New York City subway there are breaks and gaps in between the protected areas of the axon. Let's now talk about some of the uh, functions within uh, the nervous system. We have three specific types of neuron that we focus on. The first are the sensory or afferent neurons. These neurons take information from the body tissues and from all areas of the body, whether it be touch or sight or sound, smell, taste. All of the senses gather information and send that along these neural pathways into the, along the spinal cord, up into the brain. The motor neurons or efferent neurons act in the way that they sound. They send information out so that we can react in a motor fashion to the information that we receive. So information is sent from the spinal cord and the brain outwards to the body tissues, to the muscles, and to our sensory organs in order to respond to the environment. So think about it if I would touch a hot tea kettle, my sensory neurons are going to send that information up my arm, into my spinal cord, into my brain, and send the message saying, wow, that's hot, and I have to react. So my brain is going to send the message back through my spinal cord, through my arm, to the motor neuron saying, I think you should move your hand because that is really hot. And that's how the motor neurons work. In between the sensory and the motor neurons are interneurons or association neurons. These are the neurons that communicate information between the motor and sensory neurons and these are the most abundant within the body. Neurons work through the use of electrical impulses and neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemical molecules that are contained within something called a vesicle, almost like a sac, 
at the end of an axon terminal. You can see here, this was the soma that we talked about earlier. The dendrites were up here. And these are the, this is the axon that sends information outwards. And at the bottom of the axon is this vesicle area. Within this vesicle area, or the sac, are contained our neurotransmitters, these chemical molecules which communicate across the synapse and the, the gap within a axon. And on the other side of this gap is the receiving dendrite of the next neuron. So this is how communication occurs, traveling through the axon, releasing and stimulating the neurotransmitters, which travels through the gap and stimulates information on the receiving dendrite, which then fires information out to the next neuron. Any neurotransmitter that is left inside of the gap, any of these chemicals that are left in that space, are broken down and absorbed back into the neuron, and this process is called reuptake. It's kind of like a uh, recycling system. So anything that's left over, we want to try to reuse and be efficient. So either it is broken up and taken back into the original uh, neuron, or it is destroyed and not used, uh, uh, no longer used. It's quite an interesting system, quite brilliant if you think about it. Now, within the neurotransmitters, uh, within the, the family of neurotransmitters, each neurotransmitter has its own function. Today we know about several neurotransmitters, and I'm sure there are many more that we will learn about in the near future, but some of which we know about are serotonin, which has an impact on our mood and emotional states, as well as playing a role in sleep and attention. We have dopamine, which controls and also plays a role in attention, movement, and pleasure sensations. As you might be able to decipher, these neurotransmitters some, sometimes interact in similar ways as each other and in often, oftentimes extremely different ways from each other. In total, this system is, is a very efficient and fast-moving system, uh, and at times the neurotransmitters can be uh, tricked and the nervous system can be tricked by the, by the uh, addition of drugs uh, or, um, or medicines into the body which mimic the, the um, communication of these neurotransmitters. There are two particular methods of tricking these neurotransmitters. The first is an agonistic process whereby an increase in neural activity and flow of information would occur. And then there are certain drugs that are called antagonists which decrease neural activity and decrease the flow of information. There is a drug called curare, for example, which uh, if you um, receive curare, and it's an ancient African uh, uh, chemical, it causes paralysis in the body because this curare actually shuts down the production of dopamine within the body uh, and acts as an antagonist. The nervous system is made up of uh, different divisions that have uh, unique functions. First, we'll talk about the central nervous system, the CNS, which includes the brain and the spinal cord. The CNS is suspended in cerebrospinal fluid, so it's almost a, a cushion that makes sure that the brain, if it gets knocked around, uh, is protected, as well as the spine as well is protected from this cerebrospinal fluid. The CNS controls reflexive behavior. So this is when you go to the doctor and, or you hit your elbow and it jerks out or your knee and your knee jerks out uh, or perhaps uh, something blows in my eye and I blink. These are reflexes that are controlled by the central nervous system uh, and they involve the sensory, motor and interneuron systems. And this is a bit of a view of the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. Next we have the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system connects the brain and the spinal cord to the rest of the body. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into two parts. The somatic nervous system, which carries information from the muscles and the organs and the skin over to the central nervous system. And it carries messages from the central nervous system, such as the brain, 
over to my skeletal muscles so that I know how to react. Just as a little hint, soma, uh, the root word soma is body. So the somatic nervous system has to do with the movements within the body and uh, voluntary uh, uh, reactions as well. The second division is the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic almost sounds like automatic, and that's a hint to us to understand that the autonomic nervous system controls the involuntary movements within the body. Uh, so this controls our uh, certain uh, of our muscles and our glands. It helps control swallowing and breathing, uh, things that we wouldn't consciously uh, put effort into controlling. Uh, and within these autonomic nervous system, we have yet another division, a subdivision, of two parts, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system is that which prepares us for action. It is the part of the brain that, when we are facing danger, helps the body prepare to either fight or run away, the fight or flight response that you may have heard about. So the eyes dilate a certain way, the blood constricts a certain way, my muscles get ready for action due to this sympathetic nervous system and the activation from it. Once I'm done running or fighting, my body needs to calm itself down. And that happens through the parasympathetic nervous system. This is the part of the brain that calms the body down, reduces breathing, reduces glandular work, dilates the pupils in the proper way, uh, so on and so forth, in order to bring the body back into its calm state. So these are just a few of the features of the nervous system that we're going to focus on for the CLEP exam.